when I reached this point, the studio and I both believed that we had concluded all of the necessary recording and simply had to edit what we had. This was reinforced by my earlier decision not to pursue perfection on any exhibit, performance, or lecture. Fortunately, unfortunately, in editing some of the video that just ended, I realized that I had done a very poor job of explaining the fundamental relationship of chords. So I set out to find a better way and managed to some, stumble on some basic rules that I think will prove to be extremely helpful to everyone. Uh, I'm going to have to read most of this presentation because there's so much detail in it, but none of it is overwhelming. Uh, actually, all of the, everything I've said up to now, I think, if you separate it out, is very simple steps. The scales, uh, reading the treble clef, but if you take it all at one chunk, it, it's probably overwhelming. But if you take it one step at a time, it, each step is pretty simple. So, first I will try to explain the relationship between chords in every major key, and then I will have to confess to an omission that fortunately is simple to fix. Since I lost my favorite chord book, that fix requires a new, but it's a very easy exhibit. But for now, we will return to the most important exhibit that I have provided to you, which is the piano keyboard, drawn to scale, and the treble clef uh, showing the, the written version of these keys. Using that, here are some very useful rules surrounding chords. Only the simple major chord in each key, such as a C major, that's capital C, capital M, and the major seventh chord in each key, such as the C major seventh chord. Okay, the C major chord is C, E, G. The C major seventh, and remember it's a major seventh, is C, E, G, B. And those are the only two chords that include a capital M after the first letter, the C, which designates the key that you're in and the scale. So the major chord simple symbol is a capital C followed by a capital letter M. The C major seventh chord symbol is a capital C followed by a capital M followed by the number seven. All other major chords omit the capital letter M, so the symbols end up as simply a capital letter followed by the number six, seven, or sometimes nine. One very important rule that you can never overlook or forget is if there is a lowercase m following the first letter, such as it's, it would be capital C and then a lowercase m or a little m, it is called a minor chord. And it could be a C minor chord, which is C, E flat, and G, or it could be a C minor seventh, which is C, E flat, G, and B flat. So you simply need to remember the basic rule that if it is a minor chord, i.e. it has a little m after the letter of the key, you must always flat the third note of the major scale, always. So it doesn't matter what key you're in, it's always going to be C or the first note, the third note of the scale flatted, and the fifth note. And that's true of every simple minor chord. So we'll start with the C major chord. As with all the chord symbols, it starts with a letter, in this case, C. The C tells you that in building a C major chord, in any chord that starts with C, 
you will use the C major scale to build that chord, always. And that's true no matter what that first letter is. If it's an E flat, then you're going to use the E flat major scale. And you will build every chord that starts with E flat using that scale. Here's the first rule that should prove to be invaluable. A simple major chord in any key is always the first, the third, and the fifth notes of the major sale scale of the same key. So, once you know all the major scales, you can easily build every simple major chord on the piano just by using the first, the third, and the fifth notes of the major scale of that specific key. Similarly, a simple minor chord in any key is always the first, the flatted third, and the fifth note of the major scale of that key. Remember that and you can easily build every simple minor chord in every key. Here's the second rule. The same approach works for every chord that you will ever encounter. Once you have learned a chord in the key of C, you will know the exact pattern of the notes of that chord. Using this rule, you will know which notes of the major scale of any key create the same chord in that key. Once you know the major C scale and the pattern of any C chord, you can then create that same chord in any key without using the chord book, without looking it up anywhere, and without having to memorize it. And this will work with every chord in every key on the piano so long as you have first learned and memorized the major scale and the same chord in the key of C. The pattern of the notes and the chord symbols for every identical chord will also be identical except for the first letter of the symbol that identifies the key, such as C. And this works with every kind of chord, simple major chords, minor six chords, major six chords, seventh chords, major seventh chords, simple minor chords, and minor seventh chords. I also realize that since learning any chord in the key of C gives you the exact pattern for the same exact chord in any key, I needed to add four more common but less frequent C chords to the original 32. My omission was not a major sin, but it certainly needs to be corrected. So now I'm going to add four new chords to the original 32. Here they are. First are simple minor, simple minor chords, second are augmented chords, third are diminished chords, and last are diminished sixth chords. I will first show them to you on the new exhibit and then on the keyboard exhibit. Remember, all of them are in the key of C, all of them use the C major scale, all of them establish a pattern of notes in the key of C using the C major scale that will apply to the same chord to be played in any key using the major scale of that key. The major scale you will use to build any specific chord in any key is the same major scale as the first letter of the symbol identifying the chord, such as a C. And finally, remember that in building any chord in any key, if there is a lowercase m following the first big letter, uh, which identifies the key, that is a minor chord and you must always flat the third note of the scale. So in the C scale, it's C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, those are the eight basic positions, unless you run into a ninth, in which case you're all the way up to this D. The first one I added was a simple C minor chord, and once you learn that one, the four basic minor chords that were included in the original 32 
will uh, really be a slam dunk. They're incredibly easy because the pattern of each is identical to the C minor chord. So here is the C minor chord, and that's a capital C and a lowercase m. And here's the C. Here's the E flat because it's a minor chord. You flat the third note of the E, e the C scale. And here's the G. And that's all there is to it. The first note, C, the third note, flatted, and the fifth note. And that pattern applies to a simple minor chord in any key that is properly built on the major scale of that key, whatever key it, it is. And here's a C augmented chord, usually shown as a C plus. Uh, I've shown the C plus right here, and that's where it'll appear, is above where the chord goes. Uh, but you won't be seeing this on a sheet of music like from a songbook. You'll be seeing the melody here on, on beneath these chord symbols. And all we're dealing with is the chord symbols. Augmented simply means, in, in music talk, it means sharped. So, here's a C augmented chord. Use the C major scale. Play the first note, which is C, same as up here. The third note, which is the regular E. And then you sharp the fifth note of the C major scale. So you end up with C, E, and G sharp. And that pattern of notes works in every key built on the major scale of that key, whatever it is. Here's a C diminished chord. Uh, diminished in music talk is, uh, means that you flat both the third note and the fifth note of the major scale. And that's what I've done here. You start out with C, just like these. The third note of the scale is flatted, that's E flat. The fifth note of the scale is flatted, which makes it G flat. And that's a basic diminished chord. And that pattern of flatting the third and the fifth notes of the C scale applies to, to any diminished chord in any key, so long as you use the scale of that other key. And then I added one more, which will come up probably more frequently than the C diminished and which incidentally is capital C and then the little word dim. Uh, and what you'll encounter more often will be a C sixth diminished. I think that's the way it's said. I don't think it's C dim six. I think it's C six dim. So uh, that's what this chord looks like. And it's a four note chord it's identical to the C diminished because it's the C, E flat, G flat, but then just like if you were doing a, a sixth chord, like a C sixth, all you do is take the major chord and add the sixth note of the scale. Well, you do the same thing here because it says C six diminished. So it's a diminished chord identical to this, but you add the sixth note, and you'll probably encounter that more than you will this. Now we're back to my favorite exhibit. Now I'm going to walk you through pretty much all of the C chords. And these are by far the most important. You should not give up on the other ones, and I'll explain why shortly. Uh, here's what all those, all the chords look like, uh, the ones I just showed you, plus the C chords on the original 32. Uh, 
C minor chord, as I said, is, now we're not doing this down here, we're doing the keys that you hit with your fingers. And that's C, E flat, and G. C augmented chord is C, E, and G sharp, because augmented means sharp. C diminished chord is C, E flat, and G flat. And the C six diminished is the C, the E flat, the G flat, and then you add the A, which is the sixth note of the C scale. And except for being in different keys, you should recognize that each of these types of chords, regardless of what key they're in, they sound exactly the same, and you need to train yourself to listen very, very hard and repeat over and over if necessary. So of the original of 32, here are the C chords that are essential. The C6 chord is simply C, one, three, five, six. C major chord, C, E, G, plus the sixth note of the C major scale. The C seventh chord, now this is the one that I told you was an anomaly. Logically, you would say that the C seventh chord would have a B in it. It doesn't. It has a B flat. And that's what makes it weird. So if it's a C seventh, and this is an extremely important chord, I call it a passing chord because it takes you from a C major chord to an F major chord. And a B C seventh chord is the tool you use to get there that makes it sound a thousand times better. So the C seven is the C first note, the third note, the fifth note, C, E, G, and the flatted seventh note of the C major scale. And that's what a C7 is. If it's a C, capital C, capital M7, that's a C major seventh, that's when you use the true seventh note of the C major scale. So you end up with C, E, G, and B. And C major seventh, all the major sevenths are really, I think, beautiful chords. And you're going to have fun with this before you're done. <laughs> the C minor sixth chord, and this is one of the 32, is C. And because it's a minor chord, it's E flat, not E. and then the G, and then the sixth note of the scale is A. So you've got the first note, the third note flatted, the fifth note, and the sixth note of the C major scale. And that pattern applies to every minor sixth chord, no matter where you start. The only thing that will be different is that instead of saying C, M, small m, six, it'll say F, small m, six, or B flat, small m, six. And if it says F, you use the F major scale. If it says B flat, you use the B flat major scale, but you still use the first, the flatted third, the fifth, and the sixth notes of that scale. The C minor seventh chord, and this one comes up uh, quite a lot, and that's why I included it in the 32. It's and it also falls into that same category that a seventh without the M means flatted. So it's, the name of it is capital C, small m, seven. And it goes like this. The first note of the, of the scale is C. You have to flat the third note because it's a minor chord. That's the small m. You just automatically do that. 
then G, which is the fifth note. So what you've built so far is just a C minor, simple C minor chord. Then you add the seventh, but not the major seventh, it's a, because it doesn't say M, a major capital M. It just says seven. And so you use the B flat, which is the seventh note of the C major scale flatted. And that applies to, to the same pattern applies to the C minor seventh chord in every key. And once you learn these C chords and the pattern of each C chord, and the pattern is what's crucial, uh, like the first, third, and fifth notes of the major scale, you can build the same chords in any key using exactly the same pattern and the major scale of that key for that chord. You still need to learn the original 32 chords because even after you've put a new song into the key of C, you will regularly encounter all of the 32 chords that I originally uh, gave you. And by using these rules, uh, unless you run into something, a, a pretty weird chord, uh, you don't even need a chord book. You know how to create every uh, important chord, uh, at least at the beginning stages. Uh, you can then buy a chord book if you want and uh, for, for chords you've never seen or heard of because you won't know the pattern of it, because you won't know how to do it in C. But as you learn these C chords, it is essential that you listen to the sound of them. Each chord has its own sound. In some cases, the difference is subtle, such as a C major chord versus a C major sixth chord. They're pretty close together. All you're doing is adding one note, and it doesn't really change the character of the chord. It's still a major C chord. But in other cases, particularly if it's a minor chord or an augmented or diminished chord, the differences between those C chords is very, very different. Going from a C major to a C minor alone is a pretty giant step in what it sounds like to you. So you need to be able to read them on the treble clef, play them on the keyboard, and finally, you need to recognize what they sound like. That's what playing by ear is all about. Uh, in a minute, I will give you a simple and amusing, but a serious exercise to promote listening to how notes sound. It won't be chords too much, so much as melody, but It'll make you aware of, of learning how to play by sound rather than anything else. So I'm with chopsticks. And I want you to use chopsticks as a paperless exercise, believe it or not. If you don't know how to play chopsticks, find someone who does, and you shouldn't have any trouble doing that because there's millions of people that know how to play chopsticks and then play it at any key that you already know it in or in whatever key that someone teaches you. After you know what it sounds like in that key, and I don't care how many times you have to play it, once you're confident that you know what it's supposed to sound like, I want you to learn to play it in every other of the 12 keys on the piano. If you start out with the key of C, the first two notes of uh, chopsticks is the F and G. And then the next, that's six of those. Then there's seven of E and G. And I don't know how many D and Gs and so on and so forth. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I just want you to learn it in any key, one, just one key. Learn it and play it until you know what it sounds like and then transpose it, play it in every single key on the piano, starting with C sharp, D, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, all of these keys. You should not use written music to do this. You do it purely by listening to chopsticks. 
When you finish learning it in every key, you can honestly say that you have played your first song on the piano purely, purely by ear. It's a silly song, but it's still a song. And you played it in every key with no music at all. And that's called playing by ear. The reason is very important. As you learn the 36 chords that you need to learn, you need to listen to each of them. Listen to what they sound like. Then when you have to play a chord that you know how to play in the key of C, which will be nearly all of them, but don't know how to play it in a different key, play it in C, listen to it, over and over if necessary, so that you can hear what that chord sounds like. And essentially what you're doing is you're creating an expectation in your brain that this is exactly what a certain type of chord sounds like in the key of C. And you should be able to then make, make it in any key uh, and have it sound exactly the same. Practicing chopsticks in different keys creates that same expectation. That's why that exercise is important. Soon you will be able to build and recognize simple chords just by how they sound. Then you will be able to build and recognize more and more complex chords and that finally after you've gone through all these baby steps one at a time until you're comfortable with every step in this entire program, that is when creativity finally takes over. And you can start doing, you can start experimenting, particularly with chords. You, you can't, and with rhythm, you can't really do much with the melody uh, except the rhythm side of it. You can play it faster or slower. Uh, I have one song of mine that's my favorite because I can play it as a ballad. I can play it as a uh, much, much faster upscale jazz sort of approach. And I also can play it in a Latin format. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite songs. I haven't presented it, uh, but that's what creativity is all about. So I took that one song, I learned it as a ballad because I love ballads, because I have time to fiddle with chords as I play a ballad. But then I tried speeding it up and I was able to turn it into a delightful rendition much faster. And then I tried it in Latin, I was able to, to do that to a degree that I enjoyed it. And that's, that's what creativity is about. And that, once you get through the last of these exercises and lectures, that's the whole goal, is that you will start creating your own versions of wonderful music that other people have gone to the trouble to write for you. <laughs> anyway, if you have to go to the chord symbols, uh, to a chord book, uh, you can do that, but once you reach this point that I'm talking about of being able to recognize chords, uh, when you go to play it and you hear the sound, uh, if you got it right, you'll, you'll know instantly that you got the right chord. If you got it wrong, you can quickly, very quickly correct it because you heard it and you think, that's not right, fix it. So you fix it instantly, probably just changing a flat to a, a, a regular key, or a regular key on the keyboard. And when I play, I've played publicly all my life in bars and restaurants and supper clubs and lounges. And, uh, I probably every five or 10 minutes, I play the wrong chord. I just, uh, not, not by a, a large margin, maybe just one note is I'm hit the wrong key and I instantly know it and I instantly correct it. 
And 99% of the time, I don't think the audience has the slightest idea that I made a mistake. And that's what playing by ear is all about. And with that, I will close this session. As they say at the ev end of every TV news special report that you've ever seen on television, we now return to our regularly scheduled program. Thank you.